Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse, and in today's tutorial on Spacey, we will learn about part of speech tagging. So, what are the uses of part of speech tagging? Usually, part of speech tagging tagging help us to be able to predict, make prediction prediction. So, for example, in English, it is observed that any word that follows a definite article like the or a is usually a noun. So, with that, for, for, so for example, if I say the car, right? We know that car is a noun automatically because it is following a definite article there or a so now let's see again another use of part of speech tagging it just help us to avoid this amb ambiguity when it comes to homonyms so let's give let me show you an example of what i mean so for example let's call it as example one i'm going to call it as nlp giving it example so he drinks a drink right so almost drinks and drinks are almost the same way so how how, how are we able to understand it very well? So he drinks a drink. Almost the same spelling, almost the same sound. So to do that with part of speech tag, you have to know which of them is a verb, which of them is a noun. So let's see how it is. So it's going to be so word for word in ES1, right? Example one. Then we're going to print a word dot text for the text itself and then word dot POS, right? So if you do it like this, it's going to print in numbers, which you don't actually understand, realizing that the numbers are totally different. Again, so as I said in space, if you want to get the readable string representation, you just bring the underscore to the attribute, right? So that you want to see it clearly. So he, the first he here is a pronoun, the drinks is a verb, the a or a is a definite article, or yes. And then this drink here is a noun, right? So that means that, as I was saying, it helps us with prediction. So every word that follows a definite article, like a or indefinite article, or determinate, is usually a noun. So that's going to predict that this is a noun. That is how it is able to understand it, which is quite interesting. So now let's try another example. So the next example we're going to be trying is this. Let's call it example two. Then NLP. We're going to give it something different, right? We're going to call it as I fish a fish. <laughs> I fish a fish, right? The same words but different arrangements. So when you analyze this thing, it's going to give us a totally different stuff. So let's call it as let me bring another thing here. Copy this on a piece because it's almost the same thing. So let's call it example two. And then if we analyze this thing, it's going to give us the same so I the first I is a pronoun the fish is a verb but the same the same word no different this one is actually a noun right so the purpose of this post so when do we use the post and then when do we use the tag to use this this post is usually is usually exporting or exposing the Google uh, part of speech format right and then we have also this tag which is using the tree bank format it, it exposes the tree bank tax right so if i do it like that it's going to print almost the same thing but this is more detailed and then this is abbreviated more so usually the purpose of this is that when you are running or training your own model because you are training your own model you may have a lot of things so this is preferable to use this tag one right but if you are not training your own model and you're not building your own features you just go with the post that's the difference but it almost, it's the same way it works but this is more preferable if you are training your own model so that is why i actually brought it here so let's paste it here so that it flows through perfect okay that is quite nice so now so sometimes you want to know the meaning of this so what does this mean spacey makes it quite easy you don't need to go to the internet to check it you can just use spacey tell spacey hey spacey explain for me what this thing means so it will be spacey dot explain Explain for me what this VPP means. So, VBP, what does VPP mean? I don't need to go to the browser. So, VP is now non third person singular present. Wow, making it interesting. That is quite interesting. So, now let's give spaces some very difficult sentences. Let's see whether it will be able to analyze it for us. So, this is a, a sentence that I have. Let's analyze that one first, then move on to the next. So, exercise one. So, all the fit he had, I had had no effect on the outcome of his life. Wow. 
let's see whether it's able to analyze it or what. So we're going to call it as for word in exercise exercise one. I'm going to print the word dot token. <laughs> I said dot token. The test. <laughs> It is actually going to tokenize it for us. So if I do it like that, it's going to tokenize the entire sentence for us. Perfect, right? So we are not doing tokenization. So let's go to the next word. So word dot tag. So perfect is going to give us a tag of all of them. You can add a push to it. Which is going to be the post, right? So if you realize this, if you check it well, it's trying to tell us that if you analyze this our sentence, we have about four hard, 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 hard. So the all the fit he had, 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 had no effect, right? So if you check it, we realize that this one, there are four hearts, but this hard is different from the remaining three, right? So the first one is a modifier, while the second is the main verb. So that is the meaning of it. So it's able to analyze it, able to give us some information about it. So this is quite interesting. But sometimes you want to actually visualize what you want to do, right? So it is quite easy with Spacey, with, and then Spacey makes it easier for us to do it. So now let's check some other things to help us understand who we sent it. You analyze this one later on your own, and then let me know. This is just an example for you to know. So we have something called synth synthetic or synthesis dependency, right? That one is to help us to know the relationship between each and every of the tokens, as well as to build connections between the tokens. So for example, if I have a sentence like this, so example three, and then it's NLP, and then this sentence is like Sally likes Sam, right? Sam, Sally likes Sammy. So if I check this word, if you want to know the relation between each other of the tokens, which of them depend on one another, you can just use the same thing that we had here to check for the, the part of speech, which is quite interesting. Let me copy it and paste it to save time. So away you go. So let's go with this and then let's make it as exercise theory, right? So if you check it like that, it's going to perfectly bring it also. Sally is a noun, proper noun, proper noun, and then likes is a verb, and then some is some here is although some is a noun, but realizing that it's trying to tell us that this some is not just. Sammy, let's make it Sam because it's speaking at it in a different way. <laughs> okay, let's see. Perfect, just change it. Okay, this is better. So this Sam here is a now proper now proper now and it's a proper now. So how do you know the difference? To know the dependence, so just bring the synthetic dependence. So it's going to be word dot dep. Perfect. It's giving us in numbers. So as I said, you're going to see the readable string representation bring underscore. Perfect. So this is ADV modifying root and then okay, so what does the adv mean spacey dot explain which is quite interesting then you bring the a adv mode right so adverbial modifier so this one is trying to tell us that this verb is modifying something so how do you see what is actually modifying then let's let me introduce you something simple which you go more more into it which displays it right so displays it is a useful tool to help you visualize what you are going to do. So then what you need is just go with from spacey import displacing, right? From spacey import displacing. Then if you are running it on Jupyter, you just go with displacing dot render. That's if you are in a Jupyter notebook, but if you are in a in your any ID, you just go with the dot set which is here. So let's check that one. So it goes with this argument. So ES3. Then the style that we want is the dependence. That's what we want it to understand for us. So DEP. So if you print it like that, it's going to give you some SVG file. And you, so you can just copy this one and paste it in your HTML, right? But if you are running it in Jupyter, just go to Jupyter. It's equal to true. It's going to render it in your Jupyter for us. Perfect. So this is quite very nice. And then it's explaining to us that Sally is a proper noun, Sam is a proper noun. But all of them are dependent on like, right? And then this one is this like is an adverb modifier for some, and this one is this like this sum is a direct object of this like, which is quite interesting. So thank you for watching this short or long tutorial. Hope you have learned something. Please don't forget to subscribe and share. Stay blessed.